Okay, this is video 18 now from Digital-University. We are picking up where we left off in the previous video where we were working with this matrix and wanted to diagonalize it. So the first thing we had to do was find the eigenvalues for it and the corresponding eigenvectors. We found two eigenvalues, 1 and negative 4, and we also discovered or we also determined what one of the eigenvectors were corresponding to that eigenvalue. Now we have to go work with eigenvalue where the eigenvalue is just 1. So here we're going to have 2 minus 1 and that's just going to be 1. And minus 5 minus 1. That would be minus 5 plus negative 1. So this would be negative 6. Okay, and again, this is pretty trivial, but let's just go ahead and write this in augmented matrix form. We have 1, 2, minus 3, minus 6, and again, these columns here correspond to x1, these columns correspond to x2, and Clearly, if we just multiply this by negative 2 and add, that will make that 0. So we will have this. Multiply by minus 2, that's negative 2, plus 2 is 0. Negative 2 times negative 3 is plus 6, we get 0 here. So looking at this, the lead variable is x1, the free variable is x2, and as always we want to express the lead variable in terms of the free variable, which is simple enough, we have x1 minus 3 times x2 equals 0, so x1 equals 3 times x2. So here then, for our eigenvector, x2 is a free variable, that can be anything, and x1 is 3 times x2. So there's the eigenvector, which we can write as x2 times 3, 1. So here's our eigenvector, and it can be multiplied by any constant, because x2 is a free variable, it can take on any value, and of course as we demonstrated in the, uh, I think videos number 15, that when you have an eigenvector and you multiply it by a constant, you still have an eigenvector for that matrix. So we can just say 3, 1 as the corresponding eigenvector. So here So now we have the two eigenvectors. And remember, when we set this up on the previous video, you have your matrix A. Then with the eigenvectors of matrix A, you make another matrix S. That will be a non-singular matrix because the eigenvectors are linearly independent, so therefore this will have an inverse. And when you do this multiplication, you're supposed to get the diagonal matrix, whereby the, di the diagonal elements are supposed to be the eigenvalues of this matrix that we started with. So let's see. First what we have to do is with these eigenvectors, construct a matrix with them. So we have 3, 1, 1, 2. So that's our S matrix. Now what we have to do is we have to find the inverse of S. So that's the next step. So let's see. We have 3, 1, 1, 2. 
And again, we've done this in previous videos. And what we do is we write the identity matrix here. Okay, and as you saw us do in the previous videos in this series, we reduce this to row echelon form, or actually since it's a non-singular matrix, we can reduce it all the way to where this is an identity matrix, and you perform the same row operations on this identity matrix on this side, and what you end up with is the inverse of this matrix. And again, we've done that in the previous videos, so this is no, this is not new information. Okay, but let's see, what can we do here? Um, first thing is we'll switch these two rows. You always want to have a one up here. So you have one, two, zero, one, and then down here we have three, one, one, zero. Then multiply this by negative three and add to here because you want this to be zero. So this top row stays unchanged. Negative three plus three is zero. Negative three times two is negative six plus one is negative five. Negative three times zero is zero plus one is one. And here we have negative three times one is negative three plus zero is negative three. So we have this. Now we can divide here by minus five to make this equal to one. So we have zero, this will be one. This would be minus one fifth. And this would be plus three fifths. Okay, now we can multiply this by negative two and add to make this be zero. So let's see. Let's write it like this. So this stays the same. We have zero, one, negative one fifth, three fifths. Oops, want to keep things in focus. We're going to multiply this by negative two and add to this row to make that zero. So this row stays the same. Okay, we're going to multiply this now by negative two. Times zero is zero plus one, that stays one. Negative two plus two is zero. And here then we're going to multiply this by negative two. That will give us plus two fifths. Add that to zero. That makes this two fifths. This would be negative six fifths. Add that to one, that will give us minus one fifth on this side. So here we have the identity matrix. This matrix right here, this is minus one fifth. This matrix is the inverse of this matrix. So now finally we have all the pieces that we need. We have our original matrix, A. We have the matrix S that we constructed from the eigenvectors of A. And now, from here, we have the inverse of S. Now, let's take a look at this inverse. We have 2 fifths minus 1 fifth minus 1 fifth three-fifths, so we could write that as one-fifth, two, negative one. We're keeping things in focus. And here we have minus one and three. Okay, and this 
matrix right here is the inverse of this matrix right here. So let's make some room. Okay, matrix S is this. 3, 1, 1, 2. That's our matrix S. Matrix A is the matrix that we began with. That's this one. 2, 2, minus 3, minus 5. The inverse of S. That's this one, one-fifth times this. And it looks like we may not have enough room. Let's write this over then. In fact, let's start with, here's S, here's its inverse. Let's write this first. So we have one-fifth times two minus one minus one three times A. That's our original matrix. This is one-fifth. Original matrix. Two, two, minus three, minus five. And the matrix S that we constructed from the eigenvectors of A, that's this one. Three, one, one, two. Now what we need to do is multiply these three matrices together and see do we indeed get a diagonal matrix. So the first thing we do we multiply these two together. So let's see what this gives us. And this is minus 3, this is minus 5. So we go across and down. We have 3 times 2 is 6, minus 3 is 3. The number beneath that, we go across and down. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 5 is 1. Okay, across and down. 2 times 1 is 2, that's minus 6, that will give us minus 4. And again, across and down, we have 2 minus 10, that's negative 8. And we multiply it by this matrix. times one-fifth. And let's see what this gives us. It will equal one-fifth times this matrix. Okay, now again we go across and we go down. Three times two is six, minus one is five. Go across and down. Negative three plus three is zero. Okay, for the next number, across and down. This is negative 8 plus 8 is 0. And finally, we go across and down. Here we're going to have plus 4. Here we have minus 24. That gives us minus 20 and divide this matrix by 5, and we're going to have 1, 0, 0, negative 4. Divide this by 5, 1, 0, 0, negative 4. It's a diagonal matrix. Diagonals of 1, negative 4, and 1 and negative 4, indeed, were the eigenvalues of this matrix. 
So there it is. Um, sorry if it was rather lengthy. And again, this is just a two by two matrix. So if you have anything larger, three by three or beyond that, as you can see, the calculations can be quite lengthy. But again, uh, it does show that when you have a matrix, or it's an n by n matrix, and you have an n number of eigenvectors, they will be literally independent. You can construct a matrix with them find that inverse, do the multiplication, and you get a diagonal matrix, whereby the diagonal elements on that matrix are the eigenvalues of our original matrix A. Okay, that's it. I hope it was worthwhile for you. Come back and join us for some more videos. We'll try and solve some more problems. And also, we'll consider situations. What happens if you have repeated eigenvalues? With this problem here, we had two distinct eigenvalues. But if you're working with larger matrices and you have repeated eigenvalues, there can be a caveat there. And we'll deal with that in the future videos.